Hello, my name is Sarah Grace Taylor. I cover city and county government for the Times Free Press. Um, I'm here with Ken Hayes. Mr. Hayes, would you tell us which office you're running for, why you're qualified to take this role, and what your highest priorities would be? I am. Uh, my name is Ken Hayes, and I'm running for Chattanooga City Council District 7. Um, you know, I have uh, been you know, involved in this community for you know, many years. Uh, Chattanooga is my passion. Um, I've had the opportunity to sort of serve at City Hall as Chief of Staff. I've had the opportunity to serve on sort of two nonprofit, or as President and CEOs of two nonprofit boards. Um, and, you know, have, 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 have feel like I've made a difference in moving our community forward for during these years. Um, you know, I stepped down from the Enterprise Center a year ago last September, had a chance to recharge, as you called it, it was my gap year. Um, and so I'm not, I, I, I feel like now I can, you know, I have a lot to offer to be on city council, both to my neighborhoods, you know, both with city council, you know, who are, you know, several of them are friends and colleagues, and then to the new mayor. Um, Got it. So our first set of questions will be about the budget. Um, and the first question is, as we near a year since the virus hit Chattanooga, businesses and individuals within the city are struggling due to COVID-19. How would you provide aid to those businesses and families hit hardest by the pandemic's economic impact? And are there any programs in place that you'd wanna keep? And what other programs would you add? It's a large, big question. Um, I think that, that what, you know, the, the, the challenges that were dealt us in 2020 with the you know, Black Lives Matter movement, you know, COVID and even the tornadoes, you know, have exposed some, some you know, areas where we really need to sort of refocus our efforts. Uh, I think that one of the things I'm proud about is in watching Chattanooga respond is that the social agencies in this town sort of rose to the occasion and figured out how to you know, do food distribution, how to give rental assistance and to, to work with that. And a lot of that obviously came from the federal government. So number one, I think you know, that with the, with the new change in administration in Washington, Chattanooga has got to be extremely prepared to look at how we attract stimulus funds, not only just for the programmatic stuff, but I think that, you know, everything that we're reading and seeing now is going to, um, you know, result in some, you know, shovel-ready build, build projects. I mean, if you look at the sort of the gold example of what's happened, you know, with EPB being ready back in, you know, 2008, 2009, 10, with the deployment of the smart grid and the fiber network. I mean, and that wasn't, you know, a new project. That was one that just sped it up from 10 years to three years. We need to be prepared for that. Secondly, I think that, you know, and, I, and I'm encouraged by all the, the mayoral, mayoral candidates you know, talking now, is that we really, I mean, in, in sort of shifting the focus and priorities, I think that the, the things that I'm hearing most is I, you know, run a COVID campaign where I'm doing a lot of phone calls and talking to, you know, constituents is, is that, that, that we had sort of three areas that, that I would like to sort of see and be involved and be helpful to the new administration is, is that, and, and, and they all involve strategic plans. One is on affordable housing, you know, the other is homelessness, and then the other, you know, is, is parks and rec, but I would add education to that, and it, I think, you know, and to do that, and I think that, you know, if we don't, if we don't rise to the occasion and seize the moment, you know, we've got some structural issues to go do, and I think in, in affordable housing, which continually comes up, you know, I, I mean, I, I will be ready to roll up my sleeves and work with the new administration, but we need a plan, we need an entity or a person that's sort of held accountable right now, I mean, we've got several you know, organizations doing some wonderful work in Chattanooga, but but you can ask sometimes who's in charge and you don't know. And I think that that just needs a refocused energy and effort. The same goes on homelessness, as I think is that you know that I mean dollars are limited. You know, I think that that what we what we've got to do is 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 you know, and I think a lot of there's been a lot of great work that's happened, but 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 we need to really bound together. And I think that you know in every neighborhood I have, homelessness is an issue in some way, shape, or form. And then the last is education, and I think all the mayor oil candidates are talking about education. But 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 you know we need a strategic plan that's a long range plan that says the city's role is this. I mean, is it in the clearly early childhood, digital literacy, um, you know, after school programs, mentorships. In some cases, you know, the city doesn't need to be the lead. Some some in some cases it might just need to get out of the way. But 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 in a lot of cases it just needs to follow. And I think that you know to have that sort of 
you know, look at sort of roadmaps for those three issues are sort of important. Now, a council member can only, you know, is one of nine people, but but I think is, is that, that, you know, the, you know, having had a, a role in city government in a past life, you know, I can be helpful to the new mayor and his his or her team, you know, and I can be helpful from a you know, from an institutional memory of uh, city council. Got it. The next question is paving and transportation consistently rank at the top of citizens' concerns, uh, according to annual studies by the city. What transportational or transportation or infrastructural goals would you have if elected? Uh, well, here again, I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged that, you know, that we've, we've got, you know, the mayoral candidates acknowledging paving as an issue. Um, I think that, that, that one of the things that, that you know, is often not talked about, or, you know, or it is and whatever, is CARTA and how CARTA can really sort of, I mean, if we're going to talk about economic mobility, CARTA has got to be at the table. You know, and one of the things they're, I mean, they're looking at a lot of innovative ways. They, they recently got you know, a Department of Transportation grant for $3.2 million to work with, you know, with Vanderbilt, Georgia Tech, and UTC into really looking at how you can use technology and sort of maybe, a, you know, and this is an oversimplification, but Uber for, you know, buses, you know, and so, so you can bring people to, you know, to the routes. Uh, I think that, you know, I mean, there's, you know, the, the mayor oil candidates are talking about, you know, in a lot of cases sort of free, you know, free, you know, free car to transit, you know, and, 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 and if they can figure out how to do that, that's wonderful. But what I hope doesn't happen is that, that they don't, that Carter's budget doesn't get reduced to take care of free transit. We've got to find, you know, find other funds. And I think in all these things is that, that, you know, we, I mean, it's, you know, I mean, we don't know yet what the, the you know, the, the income for the you know, city has been this year. My suspect is that a lot of folks will not be paying property taxes because of what's happened. And so we've got to do more with less. But what I'm encouraged by is that, I mean, I think everybody running for council, everybody running for mayor, you know, all sort of have, the, you know, the same MO is that we've got to really sort of focus them back on some of the basics. A recent poll shows that a majority of District 7 residents surveyed consider economic development and job growth to be the top priority. Do you agree? And how would you address those concerns? I, I mean, I think at the end of the day, that the, the Living wage jobs is 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 the root call you know the root of where we go solve that and we've got to you know we've got to sort of you know refocus our energies I think that you know that I think there's been some ideas I've heard from other folks being thrown out you know some of the work that I've actually done you know you know with the enterprise center is is that we've got to I mean you know we've had a fairly you know decent year as I understand it with recruiting you know companies coming in. Uh, and then I don't think in this last year that there was any, you know, pilot agreement. So, you know, the tax base should be increased on that. I think that, that what you also have to do, though, is, is that, you know, the Chamber's done an unbelievably good job in the recruiting industry. What, you know, and then they had their, you know, Chattanooga Climbs campaign, you know, and, and looking at Velocity, you know, 2040. And there was a lot of, I mean, that, that, there was heavy, heavy citizen input into that and and i think as a community we all got to bound together but 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 one of the things that i think that you know that that, that needs to be looked at or done as you look at, at sort of the underserved or you know people of color you know economic development is is that you know there's a lot of resources that have been developed in this community for startups and businesses uh, one of the things we started at the enterprise center was ecosystem day where we actually had folks from urban league and from you know, the incubator and from launch Chattanooga sort of suggest sort of folks that they've been working on that could benefit from a day of activity of learning about sort of all the programs that exist and getting more involved in some of the Edney activities pre-COVID. Um, you know, I think that, you know, one of the things that, that, that Enterprise Center did with launch Chattanooga and with the library was actually proposed sort of a, you know, a, a joint venture at Avondale it was a BFO that did not get funded my last year there, but, but where you take those resources to the community. Um, I mean, we've got to focus on, I mean, economic development for this community. I mean, I mean, every tax dollar that comes in here is, is less a tax dollar that you know, that the citizens would have to pay. And I think that that's, you know, it, again, we, we've got to just, We've got to 
collaboratively work together and make sure that there's not overlap. I think in the small business and the minority, you know, economic development or, or startup or small business area, you've got the chamber doing some stuff. You've got Launch Chattanooga doing some stuff. You've got, you know, CoLab, you've got Enterprise Center doing it. And I would, you know, would, would encourage and, and, and be willing to be part of that is how do we all make sure that, that we're not overlapping and we're, we're serving the community in a more efficient way? So our next few questions will be about business and economy. And the first question is city labor unions and many activists and some candidates support a $15 minimum wage for city employees, which Mayor Burke was intending to implement prior to COVID. Do you support this or any other specific pay increase plans for city employees? Why or why not? Yeah, my understanding is this exactly the same as that you have. Is that you know, you know, pre-COVID, the mayor, you know, you know, intended to, to implement that. I've heard several of the mayoral candidates say they're going to implement it. I mean, you know, the city needs to set an example for living wage jobs, and and that you know, that we've talked about a lot of different issues, and we need to be sure. You know, I mean, I, I would be fully supportive of of an administration budget, you know, $15 an hour. You know, I think that what we've got to do is we got to weigh the priorities with a lot of those issues. But I think that the, you know, it's, it, it appears to me that the votes on council, the votes, you know, I mean, the, the mayor, most of the mayor candidates are talking about that. So, you know, yes. In 2019, 40% of Chattanooga's households were housing cost burdened, meaning that they pay more than 30% of their income for housing and may struggle to afford other necessities. How would you address affordable housing in your district? It goes back to you know the first question I asked in priorities on budget is that is that we we've got you know I mean, I mean there's some wonderful projects that have happened and we're doing them but but they're almost there's one here there's one there and there's not in my opinion if, if there is I haven't seen it a coordinated plan for doing that I think C and E's put forth a a um, you know a, a a start or something that's for conversations, I mean, I think they actually call for a affordable housing czar. Uh, I think that you know, it's my understanding that Caleb is getting ready to put out sort of a community land trust, which I think is an excellent idea. You know, we just we need to bring the parties together to come up with that. You know, is that that you know, I, and and again. I, the first step is, is, a, is a plan, but we don't need to spend six months, eight months put together a plan. We need to continue with some of the activities that are going on. But, 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 but again, affordable housing is in every part of my district. It means something different in each some of the, some of the areas I have, but it's still a concern you know, of, of everybody. And as you said, it shows up high in the you know, citizen surveys. So the next few questions will be about public safety. Um, the first question is last fall, Shootings in Chattanooga were up by 20% from the same time in 2019 and higher than any time in the last five years. How would you work as a council member to lower crime in your district? I, I, I think, again, it's relationships and, and, and working with the, the police department. Um, you know, I, I have, I mean, it, it you know, and, and, and again, in all my neighborhoods, you know, there's, there's issues of, 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 of crime and, and efforts to, to do there. I think that, you know, 20, 2020 was not a good year for Chattanooga, you know, and, and our budget process was, you know, that was not one of our finest hours. Um, I think that, again, you know, and, and I, I think from an activist point of view is, is being able to sort of sit down have the relationships with the various hierarchy of the police department is to be done that. But then again, that leadership has to come out of the mayor's office and it's got to be a focus. Community policing is, is, is crucial. You know, I, I spent, you know, an afternoon on Saturday with uh, some of the leaders of East Lake, you know, Neighborhood Association. Um, and that, you know, I mean, their eyes on the grounds. I mean, neighborhood watch programs are strong. We need to encourage more of those. But when you have neighbors that will call and say there's a suspicious person you know, out there, it's, it's then incumbent on the, you know, the Chattanooga Police Department to sort of respond. Uh, again, I'll go back to, you know, in, in, you know, in my days as chief of staff, you know, when we brought in uh, Chief Jimmy Dot Dotson to be the police chief, I mean, there was a strong focus on really sort of more community policing. And that's continued in bits and pieces, but I think we just need to continue to make it a, you know, a, a priority. You touched on this in your answer, but the next question is, activists spent this summer protesting police brutality across the country and in Chattanooga, demanding defunding or divesting from police. Would you consider defunding or divesting from CPD for reform or in what other ways, if any, would you consider law enforcement reform? 
No, I, I, I think that, again, we need to sort of seize the moment and look at it. And I think that the whole idea of using social workers is, you know, is, is something I don't think that the police department or, you know, has any problem with it. You know, one of the concerns you have is, is you can't just sort of say, let's take $20 million from the police department, you know, and put it somewhere. I, I'm not sure we have the, 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 the infrastructure, people infrastructure capacity to do that. And I think what, what I haven't been able to find or see is that I think a lot of, there were a lot of great ideas that came out of, you know, you know the, the, the unfortunate, you know, situation that we had. But but we need but but we we were doing it almost as enemies. I mean it just I mean we weren't we weren't doing a lot of talking together and, and sitting down. You know I I think that you know clearly in a lot of those reforms we need to go back to the root causes, which is you know is, is education becomes bad. I mean I, and I think in a, you know in a lot of the you know the, the the heated arguments or discussions that came out, you know I probably believe in 70, 80 percent of what was said. I don't believe that defunding police is the way you do it. You know and I don't think that you know I, I mean I think when you start talking about education or parks and rec centers or YFD centers or whatever you call it, it's not one or the other. It's you know it's got to be both and that's not a you know, and I haven't sat down and gone through a line by line item of the police department, but but I have heard enough experts sort of say is that, you know, is, is that we ought to use this time to sort of really look at how you reimagine police. What I don't know and where again, I'll be, you know, I'll be glad to be part of convening and bringing people to the table is that, you know, is that, you know, just because you say it's a good idea, the key is how you implement that. And so um, I'm, I'm, I mean, I don't have a, a hesitancy in the world to say that, you know, we've got to sort of, you know, really look at how we do that. If we're going to step up more after school programs, we need to be sure we have the capacity to go do that. If we're going to bring in social workers to, to work on, you know, these issues, we need to be sure that there's a structure and a plan for how we do it. During the protest this summer, public input to council was a large part of the discourse. Do you support current city council restrictions on public input during meetings? Would you change these policies or make any other efforts to encourage public input? You know, I, I think that, that, that I'm all for transparency and try, trying to figure out how you get input. Um, I, I, don't, I, I, I don't think, I mean, I think having somebody talk for two or three minutes, I mean, you get an idea of where they're headed and, and you can do that. But, but I, you know, I, I mean, if it's if it's an issue I'm concerned about, or it's an issue my constituents are concerned about, I, I want to go to where the people, you know, to where the groups are. I mean, I, I mean, I, to have a you know have a series of two minute, you know, three minute conversations, you know, in the public hearing, I think is is, is important. And it's needed, but 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 I really want, and I and I and, and this is my background is you know is is, is actually working together with people and, and bringing them together, and so you know is it when you have some some groups. You know, you know, and there's a lot of different groups there, you know, is, is I think, and again, it wasn't our finest hour during that period of time, but I, I intend to sort of have it sort of be open door and sit with them. Now, I, I don't want to sit with people that just sort of scream and talk about the problems. I really want to sort of have these be more solution driven discussions is that if you say we need to take care of children in the rec centers, you know, what are some ideas we can go do with that? If, if we talk about social workers, you know, on that. Um, but, you know, and again, I, I, you know, I was a little disappointed because I thought, you know, at least from my understanding of, of, the, of, the, of the last sort of budget process that, you know, the mayor works administration has done is that, that, you know, with all the attention that we had in the, um, you know, the, the last budget, you know, for this process is that there were, you know, there, there were relatively few people, you know, that actually called in or participated on Zoom calls. Now, I don't know if that's because they, you know, they weren't as organized, whether they just didn't feel that that, that had any benefit or whatever. But I do think that, you know, I mean, when you have a lot of numbers sort of speaking up, it's incumbent on city council members and the mayor to sort of, you know, listen and try to react. So the last few questions are just kind of miscellaneous things. Um, the first is, have you received a COVID-19 vaccine? And if not, will you when it becomes available to you? I absolutely will. But I'm, you know, I mean, Tennessee is on a state where it's for over 75. And, you know, I don't fit that category. But I'm, you know, I, I mean, I absolutely, as soon as we can, we'll do it. What should the relationship between the mayor and city council look like? And how will you work to cultivate relationships with the new administration? 
Um, I, I am, I'm, I, you know, I, when John Kinsey was mayor and I was chief of staff, John Kinsey took the attitude that, that his nine best friends were city council members. And so he had an open door policy that, you know, I probably spent 20% of my time, you know, you know, dealing with council. They were part of our team. I mean, it was the, you know, it was a, it was a team effort. Um, I, I will strongly encourage the new mayor to sort of adopt something similar that they, that, that, you know, that what I, what I don't, Sort of, and again, I don't know exactly that I'm not privy to conversations individual council members have had, you know, with the mayor. But, you know, in a lot of cases, you, you know, when a budget's presented, is that that's the first time they're really seeing, you know, you know, whether their programs or some of the efforts they care about, it's the first time they're learning about them. And I just don't think that's right. I mean, I think that, you know, that, that it, it, it that, is that it's a lot better to spend a lot of time up front developing relationship with the council, you know, and then you, you sort of serve as a team. Now you're not going to agree all the time, but, but, but it, it just, it, it it's just, it, it's, it's, I mean, I think John Kinsey probably had the best relationship with council, you know, of, of any mayor because he really worked at it. And so I, I will, you know, use, you know, sort of anecdotal and historical, you know, discussions that I've had, to sort of encourage whoever the new mayor is that, that that's the way they ought to work and it will be a lot smoother for everybody. And then the last question is, would you support using public money for a new Chattanooga Lookout Stadium? Um, probably not. I mean, I, you know, again, I'd, I'd like to understand the economic impact on that, but I, but I, I do think that when we start looking at, you know, going forward, you know, with sort of the issues that we have, I, I, I just, I, I need to, to learn more, but I would, you know, the, the last lookout stadium was not built with public money, you know, um, I mean, when, when, you know, the previous owner, Frank Burke came to see, you know, you know, Mayor Ramsey and Mayor Kinsey, he asked for public funding and their answer was not no, but hell no. Uh, and they figured out how to vote it, to build it. And it was also, it was a fairly successful stadium. And so I, you, there has to be some pretty serious economic impact, you know, analysis, but, but I would be, you know, at this stage right now inclined, but I'm, but also could ch be changed. My mind could be changed if, you know, if the facts, you know, um, warranted it.